Relativism is a family of philosophical views, which deny claims to objectivity within a particular domain, and assert that valuations in that domain are relative to the perspective of an observer, or the context in which they are assessed. There are many different forms of relativism, with a great deal of variation in scope and differing degrees of controversy among them. Moral relativism encompasses the differences in moral judgments among people and cultures. Epistemic relativism holds that there are no absolute principles regarding normative belief, justification, or rationality, and that there are only relative ones. Alethic relativism, also factual relativism, is the doctrine that there are no absolute truths, i.e., that truth is always relative to some particular frame of reference, such as a language or a culture. The Catholic Church, especially under John Paul II and Pope Benedict XVI, has identified relativism as one of the most significant problems for faith and morals today. According to the Church and to some theologians, relativism as a denial of absolute truth leads to moral license and a denial of the possibility of sin and of God. Pope Benedict XVI said, Today, a particularly insidious obstacle to the task of education is the massive presence in our society and culture of that relativism which, recognizing nothing as definitive, leaves as the ultimate criterion only the self with its desires, and under the semblance of freedom it becomes a prison for each one, for it separates people from one another, locking each person into his or her own ego. Pope Benedict XVI traced to relativism the problems produced by the communist and sexual revolutions. In the last century we experienced revolutions with a common program. Expecting nothing more from God, they assumed total responsibility for the cause of the world in order to change it. And this, as we saw, meant that a human and partial point of view was always taken as an absolute guiding principle. Absolutizing what is not absolute but relative is called totalitarianism. It does not liberate man, but takes away his dignity and enslaves him. It is not ideologies that save the world but only a return to the living God, our Creator, the guarantor of our freedom, the guarantor of what is really good and true. True revolution consists in simply turning to God, who is the measure of what is right, and who at the same time is everlasting love. In a homily, Pope Benedict XVI talked about the world moving towards a dictatorship of relativism. How many winds of doctrine we have known in recent decades? How many ideological currents? How many ways of thinking? The small boat of thought of many Christians has often been tossed about by these waves, thrown from one extreme to the other, from Marxism to liberalism, even to libertinism, from collectivism to radical individualism, from atheism to a vague religious mysticism, from agnosticism to syncretism, and so forth. Every day new sects are created, and what St. Paul says about human trickery comes true, with cunning, which tries to draw those into error. Having a clear faith, based on the creed of the Church, is often labeled today as a fundamentalism, whereas relativism, which is letting oneself be tossed and swept along by every wind of teaching, looks like the only attitude acceptable to today's standards. We are moving towards a dictatorship of relativism, which does not recognize anything as certain, and which has as its highest goal, one's own ego, and one's own desires. However, we have a different goal, the Son of God, true man. He is the measure of true humanism. Being an adult means having a faith which does not follow the waves of today's fashions or the latest novelties. A faith which is deeply rooted in friendship with Christ is adult and mature. It is this friendship which opens us up to all that is good and gives us the knowledge to judge true from false and deceit from truth. Pope John Paul II wrote, As is immediately evident, the crisis of truth is not unconnected with this development. Once the idea of a universal truth about the good, knowable by human reason, is lost, inevitably the notion of conscience also changes. Conscience is no longer considered in its primordial reality as an act of a person's intelligence, the function of which is to apply the universal knowledge of the good in a specific situation, and thus to express a judgment about the right conduct to be chosen here and now. Instead, there is a tendency to grant to the individual conscience the prerogative of independently determining the criteria of good and evil and then acting accordingly. Such an outlook is quite congenial to an individualist ethic, wherein each individual is faced with his own truth, different from the truth of others. Taken to its extreme consequences, this individualism leads to a denial of the very idea of human nature. He also wrote, Freedom negates and destroys itself and becomes a factor leading to the destruction of others when it no longer recognizes and respects its essential link with the truth. 
when freedom, out of a desire to emancipate itself from all forms of tradition and authority, shuts out even the most obvious evidence of an objective and universal truth, which is the foundation of personal and social life, then the person ends up by no longer taking as the sole and indisputable point of reference for his own choices the truth about good and evil, but only his subjective and changeable opinion, or indeed his selfish interest and whim. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Love of Learning channel to see more videos like this one. The two videos shown on the screen might interest you. Click on them to learn more.